In 2007, Thompson Center introduced this new bolt action rifle called the Icon, which is right here. And this was built from the ground up. So this was not meant to be a Remington clone. This was meant to have some specific features that at that time, so you're going back several years now, you know, almost 15 years, that uh, are now commonplace in the market. We didn't have PRS back then. We didn't have long range hunting. People weren't thinking of shooting a thousand yards. The 6.5 Creemore wasn't even invented at that time. In fact, Thompson Center was awarded a patent on three specific things that now are becoming commonplace in the market. One, yeah, let's pop this out of the receiver. So this integral plate right here, it, we call it an internal chassis. It's aluminum bedding block. So this is epoxied and pinned in place. So think of companies now that are around that weren't around back in 2007, like MDT. Fantastic company that are building guns on chassis platforms. Well, Thompson Center actually was awarded a patent and created this internal chassis platform where the bottom of the recoil lugs plugged into the base of the uh, aluminum bedding block in there. So this gave you a lot of stability, gave you a lot of enhanced accuracy at the time. And if you also notice, we have a flat bottom receiver. So a lot of the Remington clones, as you know, the bolts are smaller than the lug size. So this is what is called a full body bolt and where the bolt is actually bigger than the, uh, than the locking lugs. So we have a patent on this as well. So there's a bolt track here that guides the bolt. So you're not guiding the bolt on a lug, you're actually guiding it on the track, which again, gives you a better feel. You don't have that wobble in the, uh, in the bolt movement. Plus you could disassemble this bolt for easier cleaning. And we also went with a three lug bolt, not two. So 60 degree bolt 60 lift, degree lift on this. And then this T-slot extractor, which if you're looking at the, uh, evolution of cartridges now with the 7 Backcountry 277 Fury getting up to 80,000 PSI. This actually is a more robust design than a typical Remington clone with, with two lugs right. and, uh, and a little C clip extractor or something. So the third was that we received the patent on integral mounts on the, uh, on the Icon. So these are machined right into the receiver. So this started off as a solid block of steel. Solid block, yes. Right, so it's all machined in one piece. So the integral lugs, the, uh, the you know, the bosses on the bottom for the locking lugs, and then obviously it all plugged into the chassis. So this gun, I would say 2010, 2009, 10, um, we brought out the Venture, which kind of took over the future of the bolt guns for Thompson Center. So the Icon kind of faded off you know the uh, the production floor so what we're doing here is we're going through is we believe this is still um, the best design to build a bolt gun right for a long range for a long gun. range precision if you want to build something that's stable you don't build something that's round right so think of this as a remington clone action they start off as, as a round action so the remington action came out in 1962 and the reason it was developed by remington was manufacturability right it's cheaper, cheaper to make. Right, cheaper to make, it was easier, less chips to cut. Um, of course, with today's modern technology, modern machining, the tools available today, um, you wouldn't want to build a stable platform on something that's round. You want to build a stable platform on something that's flat. So we're going back to this design here. And Tom has been modeling the, uh, the new design because there's a higher demand for accuracy, long range precision, cartridges are better, and a lot of people now are paying attention to triggers. So one of the first things we've been working on is a new trigger design. People want to have adjustability on a trigger. So this uh, design here, it's a, you know, a two-stage trigger. So you can see the red lever that's up on the screen there. Now this lever moves how far, Tom? Not, you know, very, very short distance. A very short distance. This one, the model's not totally up to date, but you're about a hundred thousandths, yeah. a little less than an eighth of an inch. Right, a little less than eight. So it's not like a long blade trigger that you'd find on a, a Savage 110 or you'd find on a, uh, a pistol or something like that. It's a very small take up. But the reason for this is this is a hunting gun and we want some that's ultimately safe. Right. So you have basically two tra two safeties on the gun. Right. One, one of the things that allows you to do is go down to a very light trigger pull because that lever that as it slides off from underneath there, that's the sear connector. So if that's engaged underneath there, it makes it extremely safe if it gets jarred or something like that. In this case, once you move that out of the way, 
then you can have a light trigger pull. Right. So we, we want to have a user adjustable trigger pull. Uh, we're targeting two pounds. We'll see kind of where it comes out with, with the geometry of everything. But the other thing, so we had a, this is the old trigger design here. And so this was adjustable, not to the, to the degree that we wanted it uh, to be. But um, the problem was you had to take the gun out of the stock to adjust it. As you can see here in the model, Tom's going to show you. Now you can uh, access it through the bottom of the trigger guard. So now with a simple Allen key, it'll come, or an adjustment tool, it'll come with the gun. Somebody now can tune their exact trigger pull weight to what they want. And of course, they can also change it. You're shooting through the summer, you're working up loads, I'm shooting a PRS match, whatever. I may want to run you know, a two pound trigger. If I'm hunting and it's cold, I have gloves, I may want to turn it up. Now you don't have to take it out of the stock where you had to on Gen 1. And ultimately, I think mechanically, it's going to be a superior trigger to the, to yeah, the no, Gen absolutely. 1. Yeah. With how we develop the parts, how we manufacture the parts. So that was a, that was a big win on the, uh, on the gun. The gun does uh, still have a, um, a bolt lock on it, and we're still maintaining the full body bolt because there's not much to enhance on this. It really yeah. works well. We, we did remove a little bit of materials to, to lighten up the overall gun. Yep. One, one of the only um, complaints we ever had about the uh, Icon was weight. Yeah. And so uh, one of our um, goals on this gun was to take out about half to three quarters of a pound, which we were able to do. Yeah. So in some of these, you'll see the bolts a little bit more scalloped. Yep. Um, but it was just for, for weight removal. Right, right. And obviously, like any bolt gun, there's going to be so many different configurations. But you're right, on the standard hunting model, our goal was to have a full platform, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, nothing in the magazine, no scope on it that's seven pounds or under. Right. So, I mean, that's pretty significant weight reduction without compromising accuracy or rigidity and not using any foreign materials. Like, we're still using steel. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing aluminum on this gun right here. No. Nope. So, removing the weight, improving the trigger uh, were two things. The aluminum bedding block, we're, uh, we're going to continue to do this because, again, it's an internal chassis where everybody wants to be. This is the most stable platform. really doesn't matter what the stock is doing externally. That's just something for feel. It's how the action locks into here. And, you know, you still have your action screws. We'll sandwich this, uh, the lugs here on the bottom of the receiver. So they plug into the aluminum chassis there, and then they're sandwiched and tightened together. So you have multiple points of contact because it's just not recoil going this way, which is your x-axis, right? Right. So this is going back and forth. So there's your recoil lug there. You also want to control your y-axis, and that's controlled by these lugs back here. And of course, when you sandwich it all together, you control your z-axis. So everything is locked down in a very stable platform. Right. One, one other thing that's kind of interesting about this style of action is what Greg was talking about where the recoil lug is here. It takes a whole piece out of the out of component. Usually there's a receiver, a recoil lug, and then the barrel. That actually takes an extra piece out, tightens up all the tolerances so we can maintain better headspace. Right. That that's, that's machined in there. It's integral. Correct. Right. And the other interesting part that you just brought up is you're actually screwing, your action screws are screwing into the recoil lug. Right. They're not screwing into the receiver itself. So if you look at a Remington clone, you know, those uh, receiver screws go right through the action. So, and if you over tighten them, you can actually bend a Remington action if you put too much torque on them. Here, there is no bending this. And again, being completely flat bottom, um, you know, you are, you're going to have the ultimate in stability. We're playing with some new stock designs here. This is a 3D printed stock design. We're not going to tell you what's on the inside of this. So, sorry, no spoiler alert uh, on that. So, uh, there's a lot of uh, internal chassis work that uh, is, is not represented in this 3D mold, but we're going with more of a 90 degree grip, which is really popular today. It's based a lot on the AR-15 style. As you can see, it separates your, your fingers to above, to below. We still have a little bit of shaping to do, right? This is the, the first gen. Um, you know, we are gonna have interchangeable forend grips. So you can see here where uh, this will be interchangeable. So uh, somebody could put a new forend grip on it that will have an M-lock on the bottom so they can uh you know either put a um you know arca rail on it they can put a picatinny on it they can do whatever they want to uh, customize their shooting experience uh, and then we're also working on interchangeable uh, cheek pieces as well to right. get the cone height 
Yeah. And, and grip. Yep. So there's a lot going on here. Um, we, in fact, we got a call coming up here in a few minutes. We're actually uh, um, sitting with some uh, designers that, uh, that we're working with. So there's a company called Aviant, which is a, a big aerospace company. And they make a lot of uh, materials for the, uh, the hunting industry, uh, both in archery and guns. So we have some exotic materials, some shapes, some, some the designs. So we meet weekly on this. So we want, we want to have the Hogue stock. So this will be your, your standard hunting stock, right? Composite over a really fantastic stock. But then the same uh, internal chassis enhanced, again, not telling you how, uh, will then be in this stock uh, as well because uh, we want people who aspire to shoot long range to have the ultimate platform. So that's, uh, that's where we're taking the, the new icon. We're pretty excited about it. Lighter weight, enhanced trigger, uh, enhanced bedding block, uh, new stock designs. Um, I mean, there's, there's some things Bunch here. Bunch of new calibers. Bunch of new calibers, right? Yeah, when the Icon came out, there weren't, there weren't, you had no PRC calibers, right, right. right? You didn't have a 300 PRC, which requires, you know, that's the action. Change. That's a big cartridge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is a big cartridge. Yeah. So that's, uh, we're, we're pretty excited about this. But we, our goal here is also to sell actions. So we want the new Icon action to be what Remington actions were in the 60s and 17s, uh, 60s and 70s, and then obviously cloned from there on out. Uh, we want the Icon Action to be the future of all bold action rifles. Stock design is one of the arts of gun making. You can do a lot of models up on the computer screen, but at the end of the day, you really have to have a solid model that you put in your hands, you can feel, and you can make those small aesthetic changes. You know, back in the old days, we used to just take a piece of wood and just start whittling on it. We'd take a rasp, we'd take Bondo, and we would create those shapes and that feel by just, you know, filing and, uh, and filling things in. Now with uh, CAD design, SolidWorks, you can do a lot of this stuff on the screen and certainly it allows all the geometry and the manufacturability to be a lot easier but printing it out like here we have this 3d model putting it in your hands is the only way to go so this is gen 1 right now i imagine we're going to end up with probably gen 3 before we lock in the mold design but as you can see uh the uh, team over at avian what we have going on here is pretty groundbreaking now there's a lot of internal chassis system that we're not going to show you right now but you're gonna have to wait till we release the gun here at the end of the year first part of next year but i promise you this will be one of the most impressive stock designs you've ever seen